Welcome to Lessons with Jeff Thompson. This is volume one in the ground fighting series. We're also going to be doing lots of other stuff, Animal Day, Three Second Fighter, um, and lots of the different methods that I use to train for realism. Um, today we're going to be working on pins, pins being the bedrock of ground fighting. We're going to talk about holding the pins, defending the pins, and drilling the fin pins. And we're also going to be talking about um, some of the finishes. Most of the finishes will be in the later videos, which will be chokes, arm bars, fighting from your back, etc. Um, but I think it's important that we get the bedrock right first. If you can control a person from every angle on the floor, then you're, all, you're straight away you're with a good chance. I think it's also important that we look at the pros and cons of fighting on the floor. Firstly, it's not the main artillery range, punching is. Although it is the strongest range if you come to match fighting. So we need to distinguish between match fighting, line-up fighting, and ambush fighting. Line-up fighting is a three-second fight. That's the majority of situations. Uh, ambush fighting is when you're not aware and someone just attacks you, and you react as, as opposed to respond. Um, and ground, and um, match fighting is when you have a fight on the common with somebody, more like sparring. This is, this is kind of... Uh, the ground fighting video is really for if someone ambushes you or if you have a square go, um, a match fight. If you have a match fight or an ambush, nine times out of ten it's going to end up on the floor. There's no doubt about that. Whether you believe it or not or whether you want to believe it or not, it will end up on the floor. And that's when the, grounder, that's when the ground fighter comes into his own. If you look at the, uh, the UFC stuff, the ultimate fight competition, you'll see that the grapplers are winning all the different... All, every all their fights against every different genre of martial artist. Um, not just that, most martial artists that step into that arena, which is match fighting, most people that step into that arena uh, abandon their art as soon as they go in because they innately know it's not going to work. Um, this, is, this video and the videos I'm doing are not to slag off other martial artists or to slag off other martial arts. I think all the martial arts are good. So I'm not here to do that. So if you're offended, then you've got my apology before we start. What we're here to do is show you how to fight on the floor if it gets down to the ground. To do that, we're going to have to go into histrionics of it. There's some real bread and butter based techniques where you can just bludgeon people and finish it really quick. But if that, if that doesn't work, you've got to know how to go deeper. So that's what we're going to do today as well. We're going to go as deep as we can. Uh, ground fighting is no good if you're fighting multiple attackers. I've had a few of my friends being stabbed by women when they've been fighting on the ground with men. I've also had friends who have been kicked to pieces. Um, one kicked to death when he's fighting on the floor with one person and getting kicked by others. So you don't court this range. Grapplers won't like me saying that because uh, a lot of grapplers feel that this is the ultimate range, but it's not. It's a support range. They think it's the ultimate range because when you do square go fighting or match fighting, the grappler always wins. There's no doubt that the grappler will win. But outside, it's a three-second affair. If you go to the ground, you're going to get kicked to pieces by his mate. Having said that, if you're ambushed or you have a square go and you do go to the ground, you've got to make the best of a bad job. Um, in the square go scenario, it also allow ground fighting allows you to take a good puncher or a good kicker to the ground. Because he might be a brilliant kicker, he might be a brilliant puncher, but he'll still be a white belt on the floor. Um, so ground fighting has got its benefits in that respect. The one good thing about ground fighting, of all the arts I've trained in, and I've trained in most, uh, and I'm qualified in most, this is the toughest, in my opinion. It's the hardest. It's, it's more physically and mentally demanding than anything I've ever done. I've been doing it probably for about 10 years, and it's very, very demanding. What it gives, what it brings with it is a lot of confidence. You get a lot of confidence. So I'm going on a bit about this now, but what we're going to do today is pins. We're going to go through all the different pins. I don't want you to feel like I don't want you to feel like you should be rushing off and doing chokes and arm bars because you don't want to be running before you can walk. Get your pins. That allows you to control your person on the floor. That's the most important thing. Once you've got that, then you're looking for escapes, which is the second video, and then after that you're looking for finishes, which is going to be the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth video. Um, and you get as much in your repertoire as you can. The problem with grappling is. Um, and ground fighting is, the deeper you dig, the deeper it gets. It's kind of a never-ending thing. But the confidence you get from hands-on fighting um, is brilliant. In the olden days, people like Bert Asarati, uh, Stanislas Abisko, Hasha Schmidt, 
these people destroyed everyone on the planet. In fact, at, at, their, at their peak, they would offer £10,000 to any fighter of any range, of any standard, of any weight. They would offer them £10,000 if they could last 90 seconds with them. That's how sure they were of their art. Most of the wrestling and the grappling has died because it's not aesthetic, because it's not pretty. But superfluous technique is bollocks. It doesn't work in a real situation. So what we're going to do is come back to reality and get the real techniques. That's what we're going to go through today, but we're going to start at the very beginning with the pins. Everything should start with the bow, because that's respect, that's etiquette. What we need to do is make sure that um, you've got respect in the dojo. When you go out of the dojo, you've got respect outside the dojo. We don't want to be fighting with people uh, because they've spilt our beer in a pub or because they've cut us up in the car. We want to be fighting with people because we've got no other option. People always think my stuff is always about getting in there first. Well, it is, but that's when, uh, that's when I'm right at the very end of it. First response should always be escape. Second response should be firm verbal dissuasion, putting up your fence, which we'll talk about um, in the three-second fighter video. Um, third response, a preemptive attack. So I think it's important that you realise that a lot of these techniques are dangerous. A lot of them are finishing techniques. Some of them are killing techniques, especially the chokes and strangles, which we'll talk about in later videos. So respect to start. Um, in, in the boxing world, you touch gloves for respect. In Thai boxing, it's the, it's the bow, uh, like the praying bow. Um, in the kung fu, you've got the fist and open hand bow. Um, and in the karate, you've got the formal bow. In the wrestling, we've got touch hands. So we should start and finish with that. In between, you're going for all, all the way. So I've got Alan with me today, so we're touching hands. That's our formal bow. We're going to go straight into the pin. So we're just going to, uh, we're going to start from the mount position. This is the basic mount position. And although it's, it's, they sometimes call it the school the schoolboy position, because this is the position you ended up at school. Um, and although people think it's a bit of a lame hold, it's probably the best hold you'll get because it's, it's got equal control and equal finishing cap uh, capabilities. It's a very strong hold. But to make the hold good, you need to know how to defend it and you need to know how to finish from it. Today we're going to be talking about um, basically defending the hold and um, a couple of little finishes from it, but mostly about just holding it down and, um, and defending it. So first of all, we're sitting so that my, my groin is straight across here, so that I'm pinned on top of him. When I get to the position, from wherever I come, we'll, we'll do some moves later to show you how we end up here. First thing I'm going to do, because it is immediate response from here, is going to be to book and bronc to get me off. So as soon as I come into the position, I'm going to lie forward and place all my weight on him. So that if he books and broncs, I'm in a good position just to base out. From this position, I'm in a really good position to punch. This is, this is basically a, a kind of jiu-jitsu hold, especially a, Br a Brazilian jiu-jitsu. From here, I can punch him, he can't punch me. Okay, so that puts me in a very favourable position straight away. He's got no leverage at all from here either, whereas I have. I can come up and punch very heavy, or I can come up an elbow, or I can come down and headbutt, or I can come down even closer and I can bite really strong, it's a very strong hold. First of all, as soon as he hits the floor, he's going to get a rush of in-fight adrenaline, and, and that's going to make him very strong for a few seconds. Whilst it makes him strong, it's also going to empty the tank. He's, all his fuel is going to go. So I've got to recognise that once I hit this position, he's going to start going mad. So straight away, as soon as I land here, I don't want to be coming here and going straight for a, and going straight for a punch, because if I do, I'll land and he'll just push me off, and then I'm upside down. I'm in a reverse position. So, understanding the enemy, understanding that that's what he's going to do, because when he's on his back, he's going to get in for adrenaline. Um, I understand he's going to do that, so what I'm going to do is base off straight away. So as soon as, as, soon as I land in this position, I'm going to come to a base here, keep myself nice and tight. There, defending the mount from here is, is a matter of when he pushes me over to one side, he's basing. The opposite side, basing. To the back, basing. Um, if he's trying to bridge me too hard, I can use my feet. So I can tie my feet off here and, and just interlock them. This, this makes it pretty much impossible for him to get me off. I can also push his feet down and stretch him out this way. Okay? So I'm controlling him from both ends. Now, whilst I'm controlling with my feet, I'm limiting myself because I can't finish. So whilst my feet are down here, 
It's very difficult for me to turn him or to strike him. All I'm doing this for is to tire him out. Especially if the guy's not trained, within a few seconds, he's going to be completely exhausted. Adrenaline's a good thing, but it's a turbo drive. It eats up your fuel very quickly. So what we've got here, after probably 5, 10, maybe 15 seconds, we've got a punch bag because he's going to be very, very tired. I'm not going to use any energy. I'm just going to base out on him. So again, keeping it nice and tight, coming to here, coming down over here. If I want to hear as well, if I, if I can push into his eye or push into his cheek or push into his neck and keep his head straight, then I can, I can smother as well. So from here, I can lie on top of him and smother. Okay? Um, if I can't get very much leverage, then I'll pull my feet back and lie all my weight on him. Okay, what that does is it cuts off his nose and his mouth, stops him breathing. Also, from, from the smother position, if I come here, if I drop my, uh, my shoulder back and then push it up, I get a smother plus a nose break. Because what I'm doing is I'm coming from here and pushing up. So if you just look at that, I'm coming down with my shoulder and pushing up this way. So as well as smothering him, I'm pushing his nose right back. All this is going to do is going to take all his energy away. Basically, when I'm in this position, I want to be just pummeling him, punching him, elbowing him, elbowing this way. I want to force him, I want to knock him out from here, or, or I want to force him to turn. If he turns to defend, then I'm in a reverse mount, okay? And from a reverse mount, I can come forward with a face bar, or I can come forward with a choke, if you can see that. We're going to go into detail on these in the other tapes. I'm just showing you the options while we're here. A choke here, three seconds, probably three seconds, and he'll be unconscious. The danger with chokes is once you hold them on after they're unconscious, um, you know, you're looking at brain death if it didn't occur at birth with the people you're dealing with. So 15 seconds after holding it on, you're going to kill somebody, so you have to be very careful. So just coming back to the same mount again. So from here, basically I'm going to be trying to knock him out. <coughs> if he turns over, that's a bonus. If he turns over, instinctively, I'll, I'll just keep my, my thighs slightly tight so he feels like he can't escape. I want him to feel like I don't want him to escape. And then when he's just about to turn, I'll give him a slight gap so he comes just underneath me. Now he thinks he's escaped. His immediate reaction from here... <coughs> his immediate reaction from here is going to be to push up. And as soon as he pushes up, then I've got my choke on. It doesn't matter what he does from here, he's finished. If he rolls over, well, that if he rolls over, I'll take him into my guard and choke. And it's gonna, what I'm doing from here is I'm actually cutting off the blood to the brain. So whatever he does from here, he's got no chance. If he comes back for my eyes, all I'll do is just stretch him out. He can't get nothing. So as well as putting the choke on, I'm hugging with my chest and my back. I'm also, if you look at my feet, I'm also stretching with my feet. So I'm cranking the back of the neck. Again, just to review on that, first of all, I want to base off. I don't want to go for anything straight away um, because, you know, he's just going to book and bronk. So what I'll do is I'll just base off. If he starts pushing me over, base, base, to the back, base. If he pushes his arms onto my chest, I'll just pull, pull through, whack, 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 pull, pull, and then come back down again. Okay, so wherever he comes up, he can push me here, he can be strong. But look at his face, it's wide open. So whatever he does, he's vulnerable. So I'll come down to me and go to the eye. What I like to do is come up the nose, actually inside the nostril here, and just rip forward. That'll get his grip off. Or come into the corner of his mouth here, or corner of his mouth here, or especially inside. And it, there's nerve points everywhere on the body. Um, so just push into the soft areas here, there, and, or here. He gets a good grip on me here. All I'll do is I'll just come down here and lean on him. And that'll get the grip off. And then from here, I can go for an arm bar. Oh, sorry. I can come for an arm bar from here. He's got a good grip on me. Or I can just become boom, 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 boom. I'm punching him. He's going to turn over. He's going to want to escape. As soon as he turns over, I base off again. And then I've got my position. If he tucks his head in, I'll come through, 
catch hold of his eyes, or I'll come through and catch hold of his nostrils, or I'll catch his lip, but being careful not to get his teeth. As soon as I pull him up, wrap my arm round, and we've got the choke on, and it's over. Thank you. So, we've got the belly mount. We've got the reverse mount. But we've also got the side mount, which is here. And lots of times, lots of times, you get pulled down, you end up in a headlock. And people are trying to fight out from here, and they can't do an awful lot with it. So what we do from here is come into a side mount. Here. Again, I'll bring this foot up, push down here, and again, boom, boom, boom. Okay? That'll discourage him. I'll, I'll guarantee it. As soon as he brings his arm down to cover up, if I want to, I've got the arm bar here, which I don't want to talk too much about, because we do it on another video, but if he's here, I can lean forward with an arm bar or a shoulder bar, but I'm not going to do it in a complacent or kind of way. I'm just going to, from here, just use my little If you imagine the arm there, I'm going to come forward and just hit on it, just to snap the arm. So, from the start, side mount again, what he's going to want to do from here, he's going to want to pull me over and roll me, okay? So what I want to do, Again, I'm basing off. As he pulls me over, basing off, using my hands to base off. Once I've got it, I'm put my elbow in his face. See my elbows in his face there. I don't want to use my head to break this grip because it's too strong. So what I do is a step through and use my back and push up with my leg. And again, from here, I've got the option of coming forward, back, or of just allowing the arm to stay there and just coming down with the punches this way. If he turns, same again, sits up, joke's on. Okay. So have a look at that again. This arm is often a problem. If this arm comes up, or if he tries to punch me with it, what I'll do is knock it across and lie on it. I'll do the other side so you can see. Knock it across and lie on it, okay? If I push it hard enough, it's gonna cut off the carotid artery on the side of his neck, which will stop the blood to his brain. Once I've leaned on it, I'll just pull it through here and just lock it off. You see that? From there, look. I'm just pushing it through. He's lost all his arm strength now because I've disabled his bicep by lying on it. So pull it through to here. Now from here, if I sit up and push the elbow, I've got a choke. Or if I, if I, if I don't want the choke, or if it's not choking him, sometimes it may not if he's got a strong neck, then I'll just put a gap here and turn him. Reverse mount. Same again. Base bar, choke, eyes, nostrils, mouth. Or if you want to, just whack him in the back. Or if you want to, just stand up. From here, sorry, from here I can stand up and do a 56 move cat on if I want to. Or I can stand up and run off, depending on what you want to do. Now, the different schools of thought, some people will say, always get up. When you find an opportunity, get up straight away. This depends on the circumstances. If I'm fighting Alan, on the common, if it's a square go, and he's a brilliant kicker, and a brilliant puncher, and he's too good for me, I don't want him to get back up. I want him to stay down there, because down here, he's no longer a brilliant kicker and puncher. He's a, he's a white belt grappler. So while he's down here, I'm in charge. If he gets back up, I've given him a chance. And I'll guarantee you one thing. If you've got me on the floor, and you let me back up, I'll take a kick in the face to get back up. You've allowed me another chance and you shouldn't allow me that. So, if you're down here, the option is always there to get up. In lots of the positions, lots of them are like traveller's rest. You've got, you've got the opportunity to get up. But it's not always the only way. But if you want to get up and finish with your feet, or run if it's a self-defense situation, then that's your option. From this position, I could do that quite easily. But if he's a monster, I don't want to get up and give him a chance when he's back on his feet. Just to review. 
the arms come forward, swim through. Every time he moves his arms away from his face, I'm going to whack him. Bump, I'm just going to hit him just to discourage him from bringing his arms forward. I'll swim through to here. He pushes over this way, that way. If my arms are tied off here and he pushes over there, I'll use my feet. If he pushes over there, I'll use my feet. So I'll use my feet to bridge. Okay, because sometimes you'll go for a finishing hole from here. But like the one I was just saying there, if I come to here and lie on his arm, you see I'm lying on his arm, from here I could come across, pull his face across here and get his neck exposed and from here jump across and get a choke. Okay? So, you know, if he, if he pulls his arms up, that's your options with them. You can either pull it through and choke him or you can just tie it off this way, come across and put the choke on that way. If you can't see from the camera angle, he's tapping. So as soon as he taps, I'm releasing. Uh, and we go to the side again. Again, what we're saying from there, he's exactly the same. You can base all the way, all the same, and you can turn exactly the same. If he books Bronx, you can base, and you've got your choke straight away. Not forgetting the last thing, if you need to, you can tie his feet off. That's the man position. There's a few finishes there, but we're going to go into them in later videos. From the man position, we're going to go into scarf hold, which is here. Okay, so on the scarf hold, the important factors, knees up, here, nice and tight. I'm grabbing his gear or his coat here, or his jacket, whatever he's wearing, or I'm grabbing my leg. This leg is behind like a hurdle of stance and my knees down, not up. If my knees up, he'll just pull me over. And I've lost the position. And then he's ended up in the same position himself. Okay, so keep the knee down. <coughs> back a bit. Keep the knee nice and tight. Keep your head down. Keep this arm here. Uh, now the danger sign here, this hand. It's not really that dangerous because he can only punch me in the back of the head. And I'm prepared to let him do that because while he's punching me in the back of the head, I've got a good, I've got a good option to go for his eye, his nose here, coming down here, into his eye, across his lip. Um, you can see here, larynx grab here, or just poking in here. I can get, I can do quite a few things from here. So if he comes up and starts whacking me in the back of the head, I'll just poke him in the eye, and I'll just keep pushing it till he stops. Or if the situation is serious. If he's, uh, you know, if he's pulled a knife on me or something and I've got him to the floor, then I might rip his eye out. That option's open to you as well. But obviously, if you're going to do that kind of thing, then you, you, know, you have to think of the consequences um, in law and just you know, in your own mind. But basically, eye, to eye attacks are a last resort. But having said that, again, if you're, fighting on the, if you're fighting on the floor with somebody, last resort techniques have got to come in. I'm also open here to a bite. If I want to bite him and finish him, I can. You may want to bite, you may not. A lot of people are horrified by it. But basically, biting is within the law of its reasonable force. If you look at uh, the Metropolitan Police Handbook for Bodyguards, they advocate biting and gouging on all the things I'm doing. So, you know, whilst I'm not saying it's a, a first line of, uh, attack, it's certainly, it's certainly there if you want to finish your technique in a, a, a situation that's serious. Again, look at this arm, and it comes over. I've got the option of grabbing hold of the fingers as it comes over and just bringing it down to here a lot and just bending the fingers forward. But basically I'm just locking him there. Or if it, if it gives me a bit more energy this way, I'll come that way and just hold it down here. And again, I'm just pinning him here. If he comes over with a fist to, make a, to push me up this way, then I can push down the fist and just space bar him. Again, I can jump to a different stance this way and put the face bar on. Um, so that arm shouldn't be too much of a problem. People always say to me, this arm, what's the, what about this arm? This arm is, this arm's lame. If he knows escapes, he may be able to use it to escape, but he's not going to be able to hurt you with it because there's no power from it. So you're just tucking your head right the way in here. I can also grip like this way if I want to. This arm, this arm's not a problem whilst it's here. If it comes out and all of a sudden you've got a power play, then you've got different options you can do with it. But basically from here, I'm going to be, which we'll show on the drills later, be pummeling him in the head, punching it from here. That's your bread and butter stuff. 
if you want to talk to the bloke and just control him, just calm him down, maybe he doesn't deserve a good hiding, maybe he just needs calming down, um, then you can just hold him and pin him. He's going to try and bridge and roll you over this way, so he's going to try and pull you that way. If he's too strong, as he pulls over, just turn your feet over and just redistribute your weight. different things with this arm. Basically we can wrap it under here and tie it off, which is also barring it. If I, if I turn my hips forward and push up, then I'm barring it. Or I can just come down for an arm bar on here, depending on how strong he is. Or if he's got the arm, bending the, the arm up and I've got a bicep battle, then I can change stances and come higher here. If he's still got it bent, then I can drop down and snap it that way. If he's pushing the opposite way and he goes down to here, then I can wrap it into there and I can tie it off this way. Or I can just keep it that way. These are kind of superfluous to what we're doing, but you need to know what to do with the arm if it comes out. Basically, if you're pushing him in the face, this arm shouldn't be too much of a problem, but if you want to control him, it will be a problem. So, if he comes up and pushes my chin or my throat, knock it across, and same as he did before, knocking it across here, and just leaning on it and coming for a choke again or just lying on it if you don't want to go for the choke so if we look at them again we've got an arm bar here an arm bar here an arm bar there if it comes over this way you've got an arm bar there and you can push with your hips again sorry or you can just wrap it around here but these are controlling techniques if you want to then you could snap you could snap the arm from there. It's not an it's not an immediate technique. It's more of a uh, a rainy day technique. The other problem from here, uh, we just move over this way a little bit. The other problem from here could be this leg. Instinctively, or if he's trained for it, he may come up and bring this leg up. If I'm high, bring this leg up, and that's his escape that puts him into the same position. So what we've got to do with this leg is keep your head right down, or if he does hook it, if he brings it over and hooks it, then wrap it in, and the same again, get a good grip, and just squeeze down with it. If you can get his toe here, look, push it down, you can go for toe bends, toe breaks. I mean, these seem like silly techniques, but I've finished fights in, in the dojo by just pulling on a toe because you'll snap the toe, you'll snap any of these limbs really easy. So it's remembering if the leg comes up to push your weight straight forward again and you're just cranking his spine and you're putting him in. It's, very, it's more uncomfortable for him than it is for me, that's a fact. Okay, but that would be his escape from there. So look at it again, here, nice and tight, keep your head down, leg back. If you want to, you can come in and grab your own bicep and just hug. You can push into here. Lean over slightly and smother. Okay, as soon as you stop the breathing, they'll, they'll want to tap out, or if it's in a real situation, you'll just knock them out. So that's the scaffold. Going from the scaffold, we'll go through some of the other techniques. Uh, from the scaffold, I like to do the jackknife. And this is the thing, if, I've, if I'm just going to near look now, if I've taken Alan from a headlock and I've pulled him down here, the first thing he's going to do instinctively is bridge me over. So as I pull him down, he's going to bridge me over. So I'm going to lose the lock. So one of the first things you can do 
and it's a separate hold, is as you pull him down, as he goes to roll, you go to a jackknife. So it's, it's not a side four quarter, which is here, it's kind of somewhere in between. It's over here, it's kind of in a jackknife position. So from the jackknife again, I'm smothering the head. If I can get in and push the head here again, you just see the head here, I'm pushing into here, or into the eye, or anywhere soft, just to manoeuvre him. From the jackknife position, I can either lie flat, push and smother, or I can just come onto the balls of my feet and lean on my weight on. Basically, this is another traveller's rest hold. It's the way when I've come into this position, he's too strong, so as he pulls, he's too strong, then I go to a jackknife from here. So I'm into a jackknife position. Okay, so from there, it's basically just a resting hold. From the jackknife position, uh, do it right this way a little bit. So, uh, from the jackknife position here, we're going to come into a reverse scarf hold, which is coming under the head and sitting through this way. So we're the opposite to the scarf hold, the opposite way around. I've got my hand through here, it comes through the other end, under his head. And basically, if I, if I want to, I can crank up and go for a neck crank or I can just hold him there, or I can just lie back and smother. So be, although you might not be able to see it from there, I'm just covering his nose and his mouth, and I'm leaning all my weight on it and smothering. Okay, so we've gone from scarf hold to jackknife to reverse scarf hold. With reverse scarf hold again, it's not a great finishing range, it's not a great finishing hold, but it's a good traveller's rest. It's a good place to wait if he's too strong at one angle, I'll go to another. But also from here, his groin's open, his body's open, he's open for bite. He's got this hand here, but again, it's pretty difficult for him to do anything because I'm keeping everything tucked down. Okay? So I'll, I'll just try and cover it up if I can. If he gets too strong or too booking, then I'll come up to an upper four quarter, which is here. Okay, so an upper four quarter, we can come, we can lie down. We go to the balls of our feet, or we can come to here. The option again is to get up if you can. If you want to get up, you can get up and very easy from here. If you don't want to get up, if you, if you don't want to be on your feet with this bloke, then you can stay here. So from here, we've got a good, uh, a good pinning hold. Again, if you look at Alan's face, if his head's this way, that allows him to breathe. So we'll force his head this way so that I can lie my body on top of him here. So again, I'll bring the arm through, force it through. If you just look at it here, I'll just force it through so that I can lie on top of him, and then I'll just base on top of him to smother. So if I can, I'll hold his head there and just smother again. The smother has to be felt to be believed, because it, you can't see on a video, you can't really see the technique. But it's one of the biggest finish, finishing holds we do because it stops you breathing mid-breath. It's not like you're underwater and you're going, and holding your breath, it catches you in between, like that. So you can't breathe in, you can't breathe out, and your lungs feel like they're going to explode. From here, we can also break the hold, as we can with most of them. We can come under the arm, part under, part over, and control here, grabbing all of his trousers or whatever we can, both under, both over, or staggered. It doesn't really matter wherever you've got control. So from here again, I'm going to come through this arm. He's actually going to go underneath his head here. So from here, I'm going to come to here. And then I'm going to sit through, back into reverse scarf hold again. OK? So again, I'm lifting up this way. I can get my hands together, and I'll just crank. Or I'll smother. So if you see, I'm lifting my bottom off the floor, which is quite a feat when you see the size of my bottom. I'm coming up here and leaning on top of him, that's going to smother him. And although it doesn't say much on camera, if you practice it, you'll see what I mean. So we're coming into a reverse scarf hold. Again, from a reverse scarf hold, this is on the opposite side of the body now, we're coming back to a jackknife. So we're coming to here again, and I'm controlling. From a jackknife, I'm going to turn and come back to Ketigatami, which is your scarf hold. And again, we've got all the same options. An eye attack from here is a finishing technique by anybody's standards. I'm 
we're here again. We're back into the Keswick Army. Knee up tight, this leg down here. Tucking your head in tight and getting a good grip. And if you want to, you're in the position, boom, 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 boom. You don't feel like you can get much strength from here, but believe me, you can. In fact, when I was younger, I never used to practice techniques from here because I never felt like I could get any strength. But if you can see it on my own hand, okay, I'll break his cheekbone, I'll break all round his eyes, and if I get hold of his jaw, I'll break his jaw. If I want to damage from here, I'll damage in a hurry, okay? So it's a very, very legitimate bread and butter technique. From here, we're going to come, we're going to come to a side four quarter here. This way. I'll come to the other side so you can see it. Side four quarter. This way. Again, uh, I'll just turn to the side. With a side four quarter, we can, we can have a full side four quarter, which is head and between the legs here, which is a wrestler's pin. Or we can have a broken one, which is just lying across, lying across him here, this way. And you've got the elbow, you can whack him with the elbow. Um, we can have it legs out. We can have it on the ball of your feet, so I'm smothering him. Or you can come to here. You've got lots of different positions to do it from. If you come to here, you've got a bit of control. I can grab his arm or just grab his leg. It just controls him more. If I come to here, I can control him. If you can come together this way, that's a good controlling pin. By doing this as well, I'm pulling his face into me. You see how close his face is? So when I pull him into here, I can bite. I can butt, um, and, or I can just come from here, like, just keep it a hand out. Uh, I come to here. If you can see what I'm doing there, look. Put my chin into his eye. Just lean in. It pushes the eyeball backwards. It's, it's excruciating. Now, the dangers are, again, this arm. You can come through and tie that arm off. Now, once I do that, I've got a choke here. But again, I'm not going to go into detail on that because it's a different tape. Um, at the moment, we're just talking about the dangers of this other arm. It's not really too much of a danger. I've got a danger here if... Uh, if I grab hold of that leg, then what he can do from there is push me down and choke me. He can choke me with a, with a triangular leg choke, so I have to be careful of that. But that's... We're assuming knowledge, someone in the street isn't going to do that, but they will instinctively try and hook your leg if they can. So we've got the pin from here. If I want to, I can lean through here and just lie on the throat. So this kind of thing, grabbing hold here and just leaning through. And again, bump through the head. I'm in a strong position to butt. If I can push his chin through, I can get right onto his neck here and stop the blood. Uh, again, we've said about this arm. If he's here, just sweep it through there and then come to here. Now from here, I can come to a mount, put my feet back and choke, or I can come to a, a, a jackknife. So from this position, I can come to here and jackknife this way. Okay, so I've got good finishes from there, which we're not going to go into too much detail on again, but being, being careful of the inherent danger of that leg. If, if I don't put this arm out here and bring that leg up, If I just turn around so you can see that. We're not teaching this technique, we're just showing you the dangers. As soon as I tie this arm off, this leg off here, it's a good choke, it's also a, a heavy neck crank. Again, if he pushes me or tries to get me over, I've got good basing tools here. All right? Whilst I'm in all these positions, I don't want to be straining myself at all. I'm going to line my weight on him, I'm going to make it difficult for him, and I'm going to try and rest myself. I'm going to have a good rest there while he's tiring himself out. Once you come from the side four quarter, you end up back in the mount again. Okay? So basically we go in side four quarter, scarf holes, jackknife, reverse scarf hold. Upper four quarter, reverse scarf hold, jackknife, scarf hold, side four quarter, 
and the mount. That is the basic pins. First, we're going to do. Uh, we're just, just, just going to go through the different pill that pins. But we need to, we need to make the point that compliance kills. You need to pressure test these pins because they're no good otherwise. It's no good if you're just going to hold them down and say, yeah, that, you know, that's a good, that's a good pin. You've got to drill them. And when you do, when you do drill them, and when you do um, have to defend them, you will find ways of defending them better. Um, if you're just used to holding, holding a pin down and someone letting you, and you come into a real situation and someone, uh, someone grabs hold of your head and yanks you to the floor and pins you, you're not going to know how to get out of it. Or if you put a pin on, you're not going to be able to hold it. Because you need, you need uncompliancy to develop the right kind of holding, gripping, gripping, manipulating muscles. You need compliancy to learn the technique. You've got to have that. Because if you didn't have compliancy, you'd never learn. You need compliancy to learn it. Once you've learned the technique, you need somebody to try and stop you putting it on. Okay? And that will develop all the right muscles for you to actually put it on in a real situation. You'll develop manipulative power, which can only be developed in this particular way. So we'll start off. Uh, with the mount position. So all, all we're going to do is I'm going to sit on the mount um, <clears throat> and I'm going to defend the mount. Now the onus is on him to get me off. Okay? He's going to do everything he can to get me off and all I want to do is I'm just going to try and maintain my base. At the moment I'm not going to strike him or hit him. I'm just going to do clean basing. Okay? No. So as you can see, I'm letting him make all the effort. After a few seconds, especially if he's untrained, he's going to be knackered. And you could also see while I was doing it that there was a lot of opportunities for me to butt him, punch him, uh, bite him, whatever. We'll do the same now from uh, scarf hole. Same thing again. He's going to escape. We're going to try and just pin him down, okay? Same again. All we're doing is holding the move, but he's trying 100% to get out of it. You notice there I went from uh, <coughs> from a scarf hold to a jackknife, which is here. If there's too much of a danger of him pulling me over, then I'll come over and spread my legs so I'm somewhere between a jackknife and a side four quarter. Okay? So this is what I'm doing to maintain the hold. This arm got out, and it ended up down here. And once it's down there, it's no longer a problem, which leaves him completely independent still here. Same again now with the side four quarter. Uh, move on to uh, the upper four quarter. Exactly the same again. If you notice on the last one, I'm going from clean grip to broken grip, whatever I need to do to get the hold down. Okay.
okay so just a quick review on that on the mount just push in push in push in whichever way it goes I'm just going to put my hands out in base there's a big danger if I tie off too soon here because if he pushes I've got nothing to base with especially if he ties my foot off the side four quarter basically I'm going with the flow if he pushes me one way I'm going that way I'm not trying to resist I'm trying to let him use his energy and he's throwing me around with the side four quarter if he moves this way then I'll move with him. If he moves the other way, then I'll move with him. We're not looking at resistance. We're looking at letting him take us wherever he wants to take us, as long as I maintain that grip. Same with the upper four quarter. If he moves round in the fan, in a fan action, if he goes the opposite way, all I'll do is follow him. Okay? The last thing you want to do is be trying to resist and trying to fight muscle against muscle. This is about letting him use his weight and use his strength, but you not use yours. So he's pushing you around, that you're not pushing yourself around. If I'm in this position here, and he pushes this way, then, and I try and hold him, push around up, all I'm gonna do is knacking myself out. I'm fighting force against force. And if he's stronger than me, which is very unlikely, if he's stronger than me, then I'm knackered, he's knackered, and I've probably lost. So we're not fighting bicep against bicep. Using his strength, we're going with the flow. Okay. What we're going to go on to now, just to finish the tape, is drilling the pins. Okay. First of all, we're going to do... We don't need to do a lot on this to show you, because we've more or less done it in the beginning of the tape. First of all, we've come from scarfold. Basically, you can do this from any position, any position you want. We're going to come in here, we're going to tie this arm off. So we've got the scarf hold position. We're going to tuck his head, nice thick pad, tuck his head so that he's taking it on the brunt here because it's still quite strong. And we're going to practice our basic finishing from here. So once we've tied him off, we're just going to be coming down. <laughs> doesn't need a lot of explaining, it's pretty just, it's common sense. From a mount position, these are, the, these are the two key positions where you'll be punching from. Again, not getting into it too soon. Get them tied off quickly if you can. Get them tied up, uh, get them tired. And then we're coming from here. We don't want the pads to be here, because it's an unreason, that's an un... Uh, that's not how it would be, it's too far up. Try and keep it as close as we can. So we're gonna come from here. <coughs> Or take a kneel up. And if you're closer, you can use your head just to get used to doing it. You can also pull the arm across. Okay, which would be like this. So pulling the arm across here and driving down. Pulling the arm across and whoop, coming down. Can you have a quick go that That's just drilling the pads. We'll drill a couple of the holes. You've seen it a bit already. If we go from uh, from a scarf hold to a mount to a scarf hold. 
again, like I was saying, with a lot of fighters, wherever they find themselves uh, ending up, whether it's up a four quarter or wherever, they'll come and they'll make their way to whip, they'll make their way to the mount. Okay, this is just a way of drilling. So we're going to go from Keswick's army, Starfold, to a mount to Keswick's army up to his side. Yeah. Okay, just watch on another angle. Just do it slowly. So watch it from here, just nice and slow up. To the man position. Yes, you tell me. From Kessie Guitar Me, we can go from here to uh, a jackknife and back. Again. This is especially if I try and bridge him. If I bridge him here, all right, if, I, if I'm actually getting close, I've got a chance until he, if I come up to here, look, I can pull him over. But if I come to here and he goes to a jackknife, I can't move him. So we try and make this nice and sharp. One, two. From, from a mount position, uh, from Keskitami to a mount to Keskitami, then from Keskitami into a jackknife. Uh, from there we'll go jackknife to tie four quarter, uh, to four quarter. So we're going from a jackknife from here to here, and then back to the other again. Up four quarter to a jackknife. If you can catch the arm as you come round, all the better, because you're tying it off. And as you've tied it off here, you've got a nice finishing on the choke. You get from here, to here, to here. There's a lot of sensitivity down here. You've got to learn to feel which way he's going, which way he's pushing. And you go with the flow. You don't go against his, his energy, you go with it. Uh, if we go from a size four quarter, this way, to a mount, to a side four quarter, to a mount, to a side four quarter. All the time trying to keep body contact, so I'm constantly taking his energy out of him, because I'm constantly on top of him. And then just to finish off with the fan. The fan is going from this position here, right the way around and again this is this is to control an opponent who is uh, very energetic trying to throw you off i want to keep on the balls of my feet just come round okay so that's the different drills you can drill every single pin you just have to find your own drills, make them up, and work them until they become a reaction rather than a response. That's the end of the pins tape. Now what you've got to do is you've got to work these techniques to distraction. Because you can't just look at them and go away and expect them to work because it won't happen. When I'm training with Alan, we'll think nothing of drilling one technique a thousand times. Then it becomes a part of you. It's as much as, as it, it is as much as you. Um, as your hands and your feet. It's got to become completely natural. If you're not prepared to drill the techniques, don't expect them to work for you. We're trying to work on hardcore techniques and on reality, working on things that will work for you outside. If I don't think it's going to work, or if I haven't worked it, then I won't even put it into the tape. Some of the stuff is superfluous to it. Um, some, of the, some of the techniques, uh, they're not techniques you would chase, they're just techniques that you'll take if they're offered to you. I won't chase little arm bars, but if they're offered to me, I'll take the arm bar and snap it. They're, they're good controlling techniques and they're good finishers. Basically, your bread and butter stuff is your pins, your strikes, and your chokes. 